In this video, we'll be talking about brain and your brain and study brain because the brain is so important. Your brain lets you think and move. It, it not only controls digestion but also heart rate and body temperature. And we'll learn about two different types of system that brain has, which are nervous system and endocrine system. Keep watching the video to learn more. From the video that we just watched, we at least know that the brain is a very important system or organ in your whole body. Now what it makes does is basically we know that it makes you think, brain lets you think and move. So there's two functions going on, thinking and moving. So for that, they can't just have one system that does both of the things at one time. So we have two systems that is a communication network within, with, connected to the brain. So the communication networks are the nervous system and endocrine system. Now like it sounds, nervous system has nerves in it which basically makes you think. An endocrine system consists of skull and spinal cord and further will dis, uh, demystify this two communication network even further. But endocrine system makes you move. So there's two systems that does different function, that operates different function. Now, what communication network does is basically its function is that to respond to the changes in your environment. Now, even if you were to go from one room to another, there might be a little slight change of temperature. So what your body does is basically responds to the changes that is going on in the environment. And how many times does it happen in a day? Well, it's countless number of times. So it's infinity number of times because we haven't, we don't know yet. Because there's so many number of places you can, oh, a person can visit in one day. So messages that you think in your head. Now, these messages can be generated, delivered, interpreted, and act upon by your whole body. And this is only done by brain. So now what we are going to do is go ahead and demystify the topic about communication network on endocrine and nervous system. Now like we mentioned there is two different types of system that are communication system. Now each, of sy each system has different kind of function than one another. So the first system that we will demystify is nervous system. So let's go ahead and take a look at nervous system. Now what is nervous system? Well it's a system that is physically connected to the network of cells, tissues and organs that controls thoughts and movements. Now if you were to take an example of nervous system, let's go ahead and take an example of it. Let's say that when you walk out outside uh, without sunglasses on the sunny day, your nervous senses senses that bright light coming into your eyes. It sends a message that tells your pupils, which are the eye, the black dot right here, which tells the pupils to shrink. So this is the reason why whenever you go outside then uh, uh, on a sunny day without your sunglasses, you have to shrink uh, your eyes a little bit because you, uh, it sends a message to the brain to uh, shrink, okay? so. It, this is the whole process of the nervous system. It, since it's consistent of nerves, it sends signals, messages, and uh, some in kind of interpretation that has been going on in your body. Moving on to our second uh, network, or the second communication network, which is the endocrine system. So what is the endocrine system? Well, endocrine system is a collection of physically disconnected organs. So here, as you see, this is physically connected networks and this is physically disconnected networks. So what does that mean? Well, physically connected network means from your brain to your whole body. Something is there that connects your brain to your whole body, which are the nerves we know. Okay? So this has to be consistent of nerves, cells, and other uh, cells, tissues, and organs, right? Now this is something that is not connected to your brain. That is your skull and the uh, spinal cord. But here it's not mentioned yet. We'll talk about it later in the further in this video. 
Now it's a disconnected organ that what it does is basically helps control the growth, the development and stimulate which is to basically the respond to the environment. It doesn't matter uh, if you go on a hot, uh, hot, uh, hot day outside your house you wouldn't be wearing a jacket because it's hot outside, it's not cold outside. It's your response to stimulate. If you go to a cold climate outside where there is snowing without a jacket, it wouldn't suit in, right? Because it's not a sunny day, it's a uh, it's cold, cold uh, climate. Now, the example, a simple example would be the stimuli, which is the body temperature that we just talked about. Now, if you were to take an example, furthermore, that is, when you are outside on a hot day or you uh, or you exercise uh, your body starts to feel warm and your endocrine system responds by uh, producing messages that tell your body to sweat more so it can cool down now both of the system which are shown over here let you respond to stimuli in your environment and maintain homeostasis which is the internal temperature of your body now, a stimulus is defined most broadly as something that causes a response. In living system, a stimuli is anything that triggers a change in an organism. Changes can be made in three different ways. That is, first can be chemically, circular, and behavioral. So three different changes can be made in a living thing, living organisms. Now you can think of an endocrine system. This system, you can think of it as a working satellite. Now, we know that satellite, when you have a satellite receiver, you get the satellite signals from that the station where it uh, sends off or kicks off the satellite uh, signals. And, but what it does, you've got to notice that it sends a signal all around it, okay, in all directions. But only, you see, only television that have special receivers can get the signal. Why? Because it doesn't. Uh, it has those antennas which can catch the signal and show you what's going on on the TV itself. So you can think of that as an endocrine system. Uh, what it, your endocrine system, uh, your endocrine system's chemical signals are carried by bloodstream throughout the body. Yet, only cells with certain receptors can receive that signal. On the other hand, if you see, there's the nervous system, right? Now, you can think of nervous system as like the cable television. Now, the cable television is very old kind of television which doesn't have those uh, receivers, antenna, you can see. So, even though the signal that is being sent in all directions, the cable, which is cable television, which you can think of nervous system, cannot get those signals because it's physically connected to the TV. The cable itself is connected to the TV. Now you can also think of endocrine system as a wireless model and nervous system as a cable model. You have all these wires and everything plugged in together in order for your uh, in order for internet to work. While endocrine system is just Wi-Fi. You just have a modem and it provides signal for everywhere. No matter where you sit in your room, you get the Wi-Fi signal. And it, then you can access your internet. The same basic idea is applied to this communication network and this is the reason why it's known as a communication network because it's, communica it's communicating throughout your whole body with your brain. So the first type of communication that we talked about is nervous system and the second we talked about was the endocrine system. Now what we'll do is basically discuss more on nervous system and endocrine system. So the nervous system, nervous and endocrine system also have different rates of communication. Like we know, uh, already know, those people who are familiar with internet uh, can get this idea that there's a lot of difference or not a lot, but different rates of diff uh, difference within a Wi-Fi model and a cable model. So, apart from that example, let's move on to the endocrine system. So your endocrine system works slowly and control processes that, that occurs in long period of time. Now you can think of, uh, uh, think of things that happens in long period of time. That is, for example, 
hair growth. It happens long period of time. When you cut your hair, it doesn't just grow snap, it's grown back again. No. It takes time to grow your hair back. Then aging. When you're small, it doesn't you don't show wrinkles, but when you are like 60 or 70, you show wrinkles. So it takes uh, a few years of time, like 60 or 70 years of time. Then sleep patterns. You sleep different way than you used to be. So it, that whole process, there's three examples that I mentioned, is developed or controlled by your endocrine system. So the endocrine system also helps, not only does this three function, but also help regulate the homeostasis function, such as your body temperature that we said. Not only that, it also has blood chemistry. For example, as the day gradually warms, your endocrine system responds by releasing these chemicals that simulate the sweet glands. The change in the temperature over the course of the day is slow. So you do not need to uh, need a rapid response from your body. So whenever you go outside, it, it provides a sweet glands which, which over the period of time makes your body homeostatic to the outside temperature. And from outside the temperature, when you enter back in your house, which is completely different temperature, it, pro it changes to the normal body temperature again. So this is uh, your endocrine system. Now let's move on to a nervous system. So your nervous system works quickly and controls Im immediate process, such as heart rate. It's beeping fast. You can put your hand over to your uh, uh, lungs over here, and you can feel that your lung is beeping fast because you're breathing constantly, such as, like we said, heart rate and breathing. Now if you touch your hand on hot stove, an immediate response from your nervous system causes you to jerk the hand away. Without a quick reaction, your hand would be badly burned. Now this is basically saying that if you have nerve, if you don't have a nervous system, you can cause a lot of injuries to yourself. Okay? So because of nervous system, what we can, we can feel that immediate response in our body. We know what's good for us and we know what's bad for us. We, a person wouldn't go up and just stand in a fire, okay? Because he would feel warm uh, and basically would start burning, right? So this nerve basically send a signal to your brain saying that it cannot control this kind of temperature so you need to change the temperature as soon as possible. So this is the reason whenever you touch your hand on the hot stove you need to change the temperature so you remove your hand from it. Otherwise if you don't it would be badly burned. Okay? And signals, talking about signals, signal move from skin on your hands to the muscle on, on your arms by passing through two parts of nervous system. There's two parts of nervous system that we'll talk about which is the central and furical. So let's go ahead and talk about CNS and PNS. Now, like you know, the communication network consists of two different parts. That is a nervous system and an endocrine system. Now, let's take a nervous system because it consists of two parts as well. Just like a communication network does. Now, nervous system consists of two parts that are CNS and PNS. CNS, starting from CNS. Let's go ahead and talk about CNS. CNS stands for Central Nervous System. Now as you guys can see from right here, it includes the brain and the spinal cord right here. Okay? Now what it does is basically interprets, interprets, the, message, uh, interprets the message from other nerves in your body. And what it does is store some of them for later on. Now you can say this marker, I'll put it right here. Okay? And I will say after I'm done shooting this video, I'll take this marker and throw it away since it's over. Okay? This is a thought that I've thought in my mind for later purpose. I can't just throw it away right in, in front of the video. Okay? So this is something that is some of the messages that have been stored for later on purposes. If your mom tells you to do something and you say I will do it later, 
this thought has been stored in your mind and after you're done with your work you can do that work for later on okay this is something that CNS can do now let's move on to PNS now what does PNS stand for well PNS is spherical nervous system what it does what it is is basically not just one uh, what not just one nerve but it is the networks of nerve now its function is basically trans uh, transmit uh, transmits the message to and from uh, the CNS which is a central nervous system to the other organs in the body and what you can see uh, you can see some of the nerves of PNS extending from the spinal cord towards your neck and shoulders so that's it for the brain and this is how your brain controls the whole of your body and this is the reason basically this is the whole idea of why people say brain is the most important organ in your body thanks for watching